All right, WWDC 2021. There's no new hardware, but hopefully all this new software is gonna make your old hardware feel like new. So let's go through the most important things that were announced. AirPods Pro are always at the top of my list of favorite gadgets. So any updates are always extremely welcome. And the one that I'm excited about today is their full integration into the Find My app. Until now, you could see them in the app, but it was limited to showing you the most recent location that your phone had connected to them. And then playing that little chirping sound, but that only worked if you were already connected to the AirPods. Now they also use the whole Find My network just like AirTags do. So they send a little beacon to any iOS devices that are nearby, and then it passes that information into the network. So if you've lost it anywhere outside of your home, you're way more likely to find them. And there's also a new setting to get a notification alert if you walk away from your AirPods so you don't accidentally leave them behind. It's still not perfect. You still can't trigger the chirping locator sound unless you're close by and it's also just available on the AirPods Pro or AirPods Pro Max for now. They have a few other features as well, like new in-ear notifications, conversation boost, which can use AirPods Pro to add some clarity to a voice speaking in front of you. And spatial audio is also available on tvOS, M1, Max, and even FaceTime. And speaking of FaceTime, the huge feature in iOS 15 that might seem kind of low key at first, but will probably matter a lot, is web links to join FaceTime calls. Now, I know that sounds kind of boring because we're used to it in apps like Zoom, but that's exactly why it's a big deal. Not only can Android or Windows users now join into the calls, also boring but important is that they've now added a grid view mode in FaceTime because I think some of those floating bubbles were a little too cute for some people, so probably should have always been there. And it looks like they've also redesigned the call control interface. Hopefully that is an improvement as well. On top of all of that, there's also SharePlay. So now you can watch movies, listen to music, or share your screen with other people that are on the call. Now, I just really want them to add high quality call recordings so that I can start using FaceTime to record my podcast. I'm not sure if they fixed everything in this area, but Apple has made a huge revamp the notification system. It has a new summary system so you can decide how often lower priority apps can nag you. And they've added some options to have different notification profiles, which Apple calls focus. So let's say you're at work, you might get notifications from Slack, Asana, and your calendar. But when you're in your personal space, your friends and family are the only things that come through in your texts or wh whatever it is that makes sense for you. Then these features sync across all of your devices. So your iPad, your Mac, your phone, they'll all be on the same page in terms of who's able to get through to you. Now, what I really was hoping to hear is that they had redesigned the notifications in Mac OS because ever since Big Sur, they have been a total mess and it's always hard to clear them. It's painful to have them always covering up exactly what I need to see in that corner. So there's a small glimmer of hope here because on the website, Apple mentions there is a new look for notifications, but I have not been able to find any screenshots yet. So for now, I've got my fingers crossed. Oh, and um, speaking of notifications, there is a little bell icon below this video that would let you know every time I release a new video, Personally, I keep all my YouTube notifications off. So if you're anything like me, instead, there is a subscribe button that might be a little better suited to you. All right, here's one that you didn't hear about in the WWDC keynote, but will probably improve a lot of people's security habits. There is now a two-factor authenticator built into iOS 15 and macOS Monterey. So if you've already been using two-factor authentication, you've probably been using a third-party app like Authy or Google Authenticator. And that's an extra step that a lot of people just don't take. So their accounts end up being at higher risk of being compromised, or they might be using their cell phone number, which can receive two-factor authentication, but is way less secure. There's a lot of risks there as well. So if this gets more people using two-factor authentication, it might save a lot of pain and suffering in the future. Every Apple event can be a huge information dump and take days to really process everything that's been announced but I do have an app to recommend to help you keep up to date on the latest Apple news, and that's Flipboard. And not just Apple news, Flipboard is the perfect way to track all of your favorite topics. Here I'm inside a section all about Apple, so it's curating a feed for me that I can just flip through, get more and more content. It's even breaking down WWDC 2021 for me. And if I tap on an article, it becomes full screen, 
and I can, well, obviously I can read it. They even have a special reader view so you can get something a little more optimized. It's all about putting the content first and making this just really easy, casual reading experience where you can just go through and find everything you want to. But you don't just passively read and watch on Flipboard, you also can be part of the community and contribute back by sharing articles and videos that you find interesting. So here's everything I'm following. Whenever I come across something I like, I will just hit the share button and put it inside my Apple feed for you guys to find. There is so much you can do with this app. You can either take a quick dip into the river of news or immerse yourself completely by digging deep into a topic. Flipboard just gets out of your way and puts the content up in front. So just look for Flipboard in the App Store on your iPhone, your iPad, or on your Mac, you can head to the website. It works everywhere that you want to use it. And while you're there, why don't you just give me a follow? You can find it with the latest Apple photography and filmmaking news. Thanks again to Flipboard. The Messages app has a new set of features that Apple's calling Shared With You. And this is to help with all of that content that we send each other constantly back and forth, but often we just lose track of it. It does this with links and news, but what's really cool is that it also works with photos. So there's a new design to preview groups of photos that arrive in your messages thread, and then later they are really easy to find inside the Photos app. Now the Photos app has always had a shared albums feature for this kind of thing, but it's a much bigger commitment to start one of those, and I'm sure many iPhone users don't even know that it exists, so I think that this will make all of us a lot more casual about sharing any photos of our friends and family while we're with them that they might be interested in keeping on their phone. But be aware, there is a trade-off for the convenience of texting the photos. Just like every other social media app, messages do compress the images to speed up the transfer. So you won't be receiving the originals. If you plan on editing the images any further or applying filters, it is worth it to airdrop them instead. Google has done an incredible job for years now identifying text in our photos and even translating it. So Apple's new live text feature is kind of playing catch up, but as an iPhone user, I'm really excited to see this built into the default camera app. The way we'll probably start using it day to day is just to extract little bits of info from our environment, like notes on a whiteboard or a phone number on a sign, but it also handles more advanced tasks like live translation and it can identify objects like plants or dog breeds and all of that goes into Spotlight. So you can just swipe down from the top of your iPhone or iPad, start searching and it's gonna understand the context of what you're searching for better than ever before. When they started talking about iCloud Plus, it kind of sounded like Apple had just come up with a new way to make a little bit more money off of all of us. It includes new features like Private Relay, which is effectively Apple's VPN solution, so it can encrypt your data. And a service like that typically costs like 10 bucks a month for reputable VPN providers. And it turns out Apple is just gonna throw that in to iCloud without changing the price of it which is pretty great. There's also a new feature called Hide My Email, which is similar to what they offer in Apple Pay. So there they generate a burner email. So it's just scrambled letters and keeps your real email private and forwards it along to you. They're also gonna start bundling unlimited storage for HomeKit enabled security cameras. And a feature that can be hard to talk about but is extremely important is the addition of digital legacy. So this is a way to provide your loved ones with access to your devices when you pass away. And I know that's not fun to think about, but I think that features like this have really been neglected by the tech community. So I'm really glad to see that Apple is thinking about this and it is something we should be able to talk about a little bit more. Now the hidden iCloud feature that they didn't talk about in the keynote is now you can use personalized domains for your iCloud emails. For me, this has always been a deal breaker. So now Apple's email offerings are suddenly a lot more interesting to me. The iPad has been struggling for years to really prove itself as a serious device for work and content creation. Even though the hardware is great, software is a little bit lacking. And we all have these lists of features of ways that it kind of lags behind the Mac. So for this WWDC, Apple took another stab at what multitasking looks like, which I think was absolutely necessary because I never got the hang of how it worked up until now. So now there are a couple of buttons up the top that can help you change to different split screen modes and it's easier to move apps around. Will this simplified design fix the problems? 
I have no idea, <laughs> but it sure can't get any worse. So I'm glad they're trying and I wanna see more like this every single year. And a quick tangent, Safari also received a complete redesign, making the tabs way smaller and simpler and adding tab groups. And after staring at this all day, I still can't decide if I like it or not. You tell me. And finally, my absolute favorite new feature from WWDC 2021 is universal control. And the basics here are that you can use the same keyboard and mouse across multiple Apple devices. So the perfect example is, let's say you're using your iPad as a second screen. You don't have to run sidecar. You can use it like an iPad and your mouse can just push all the way over from your Mac to the iPad. But then they showed off a feature that really got me excited. They set up two Macs and an iPad and Craig Federighi dragged a file from the iPad across the MacBook over to the iMac and into Final Cut Pro. Now, this is a feature I hadn't even thought to ask for and I'm really curious about how it's actually sending those files. Right now, I know when I use AirDrop, which is multiple times every single day, it's not totally reliable. Sometimes it doesn't work and it's really painful when it doesn't. So hopefully all of these features actually work consistently and I could rely on them because then I would really make it part of our professional workflow. And I think a lot of other people would as well. This would become a very common way of doing a second monitor. If you're thinking of upgrading to an M1, I'd strongly recommend checking out my video where I talk about all the first things I do when I set up a new MacBook. If you wanna play with all this new software, the public betas are gonna be coming in July and it's all gonna be released in the fall. And until then, you can just stay busy watching all my other Apple videos.